Call to order. This is the seventh regular meeting of the 2010-2011 Common Council. And as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. A mayor's country is not a certain area of land, of mountains, rivers, and woods, but it is a principle, and patriotism is loyalty to that principle. Thank you, Sue. Not to correct you, but it's a man's country, not a mayor's country. <laughs> I said man. Did I say mayor? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a simple Freudian slip. It was a Freudian slip. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the change. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Roll call, please. Oh, that was good. Okay. Boren? Here. Bow. Here. Bowers? Here. Decker? Excused. Kisha? Here. Hammond? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Excused. Koth? Here. Kittleson? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Rundfleisch? Excused. Vanderweel? Here. Percy? Here. And Wonkaman? Here. 13 ayes. We have a quorum. Now uh, Alder Person Koth will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Julie. Looking for approval of the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting. So moved. Second. Motion and a second to approve the minutes under discussion. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resignations, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. There is one from uh, uh, Richard Hires uh, advising that he's resigning from the Redevelopment Authority and Parking and Transit Commission. Move to accept. Second. We have a motion to accept and a second. Under discussion? If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. Honorable members of the council hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Peter Pittner to be considered for appointment to the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force to fill the unexpired position of Sarah Thiel, whose term expires on 4-25-2011. Signed by the mayor. That lies over. And I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Also to the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force, Ron Rinfleisch to replace John Hill, the representative from the Sheboygan Area School District, whose term expires 4-25-2011. Jeff Goins to replace Thomas Grittinger, the representative from UW Sheboygan, whose term expires on 4-25-2011. And Laura Gum to replace Pat Hartley, the representative from the Utility Company, whose term expires on 4-25-2011, signed by the mayor. Looking for a confirmation? Motion to accept. Second. We have a motion and a second to confirm the appointments. Under discussion, if there is none, roll call, please. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Powers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Do we have public forum this evening? Yes, we do. First on the list would be Dick Susha. Good evening. Good evening, Dick. Could you give me your home address, please? 15 North Point Drive, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. Sheboygan County Taxpayer Alliance thanks the Common Council for addressing many of the proposals that we submitted a year ago. While all the items were not addressed, the ones that were are having a positive effect on our city, and you are to be congratulated for those. Now we request that you and the mayor continue your positive efforts in addressing our 2010 proposals. We refrain from adding any one such as uh, the electronic voting board that we feel is necessary but is not uh, necessary at this time. So we fully understand the economic times that we're in and our 2010 proposals stay focused on suggestions to institute things now and in the near future. So we submit the following 
cons uh, proposals for your consideration. You have the proposals in front of you. I won't uh, narrate all of them, but uh, to highlight every one of under the master plan, uh, it was talked about to have a, and such as the county has had a comprehensive priority study of all departments, we really urge you to do this and this be the first step. We also urge and we understand you don't have a planning director now, but we have to have that 10 year development plan. And we certainly have to have the public works come up with a five year streets program. We also are encouraging uh, the development, further development of uh, industrial park land. Heavens knows we need jobs in this area and a combination of the new Sheboygan County, uh, the Economic Development Corporation uh, is a step in the positive in, in the right direction. Uh, that along with the New North and the Wisconsin Way are good groups to uh, bond together. Hopefully we can do some things on the state level in regards to binding arbitration. <coughs> in sh regards to shared services, we still think you should look at the combining uh, with the county, in other words, have a county-run library, uh, Maywood, and a Wildwood complex to be run by the county. Uh, the proposal that was passed fairly recently on the new Spelman Technologies was a step in the right direction, a good step, uh, but we shouldn't wait for the uh, five years before we start combining the dispatch. We also should look further, I know we did that a few years ago, about outsourcing jobs such as garbaging, garbage collecting and so forth. Uh, now is still a good time to do that. You're talking about it with, with uh, tree trimming. Uh, there are other areas that can help our public works department still do a job and keep the city of Sheboygan uh, looking great even though they are getting chop, chop, chop. We urge you also to not at this point restructure the city departments until the city administrator comes on board. Now that's not saying it's going to be next year or the year after, but the city administrator should have that authority to, to line up his departments as he, see fit, as he sees fit or she sees fit. Uh, so therefore we urge you to approve the recommendations of the structure, the Government Structure Committee. The fire department issue we feel is still not over. We are urging the elimination of the ambulance by fiscal 2001. Uh, we are still asking for separate financial statements and during this time after the phasing out of the ambulance you can then determine how best to serve this city with fire protection. Fire protection. And I want to emphasize fire protection. We can set the table of organization not only in public works. Excuse me, Dick, would you like your extra minute? Yes, please. Motion to approve the extra minute. Second. Second. And transit, but also in the fire department. Uh, we also are urging you to uh, Look at the transit division. You have some attachments there uh, where some cuts can be made and we should look at Department of Public Works and transit vehicle maintenance combining for some cost savings. You have to look at or the redevelopment authority should certainly look at the ground leases that are delinquent. The city is not a bank but there are 40 outstanding loans totaling about $5 million. So let's really be 
more careful and scrutinize some of those loans and even grants that are being issued. We also urge you again to look at a more uniform schedule for the public work, I mean of the Committee of the Whole. Excuse me, Jack. Uh, your minute is up. Ooh, fast minute. Fast minute. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Schneider. <clears throat> Mayor Susha, excuse me. <laughs> well, mayor's country. Uh, next. Uh, next on the list is Tom Jensen. Is Tom here this evening? Tom Jensen? Oops. Okay, that's it. Okay, that is all for public forum. Uh, under mayor's announcements, I will be brief. Um, first of all, uh, we have an effort moving forth uh, to put an emergency call box at King Park. Um, an emergency call box being something that will dial directly to 911 uh, in, e in event of any uh, uh, emergencies at King Park, namely uh, the water emergencies. Um, our own Alderman Hanna, being the generous type of individual he is, uh, has written a personal check for $1,000 to start this effort. I have it right here. Now, we haven't cashed it yet, so we don't know if it's any good. It's but good. It. It's in my margin account. Okay, it's good, too. <laughs> I wouldn't say um, that. <laughs> we, we need about four thousand four to five thousand dollars to put this together so if there are any uh, concerned citizens out there that would like to uh, donate to this cause that we can get an emergency call box down at King Park we would greatly appreciate it but I do thank Alderman Hanna uh, for stepping forward and starting this effort um, one other announcement uh, this is not an announcement this is more of a thank you um, we have a lot of city employees that do a great job they do a tremendous job especially uh, with the amount of staff that we have now uh, keeping the city running but occasionally you have one employee that really uh, really shines and uh, that person that I'd like to thank right now is named uh, Chad Pelashek from our Department of Planning and Development uh, Chad single-handedly put together I shouldn't say single-handedly I'm I'm embellishing it a bit too much but he was uh, very instrumental uh, he's like a one-man show when it came to the parade, all the events down at Deland Park, uh, the events at Fountain Park, everything going on in the city this uh, past uh, 3rd of July. Uh, Chad was the guy that put it together uh, in a state of flux between having tourism in the city and tourism in the chamber. So I would just like to thank Ch Chad for those efforts. It was a, 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 a great event, went off without a hitch, so thank you to Chad. And this way, I don't have to write a proclamation about it. I just think of it. So. <laughs> That's all I have for uh, mayor's announcements. Uh, what we have now is a presentation by Pat Patrick Drynan, who is the executive director of the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation, also known as the SCEDC. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening. Uh, again, Patrick Drynan. I'm the executive director of the new Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation. I uh, just have a, a short presentation here tonight in, in regards to one of the items on the agenda uh, for action later this evening. Uh, as many of you are probably aware, the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation was established uh, late last year and essentially was a transition of the Sheboygan Development Corporation uh, into the new Economic Development Corporation on a countywide basis. Um, I do want to point out uh, the, uh, our, our current chairman of the SCEDC, uh, Gary Dalmas, is in the audience as well tonight. Uh, joining me. Um, is, uh, and Gary was involved with the Sheboygan Development Corporation for a long time. Uh, the Sheboygan Development Corporation had a very productive and um, uh, cooperative 25-year uh, relationship with the city of Sheboygan, uh, accomplished many things. Some of the major initiatives included the uh, Harbor Center Master Plan, uh, the South Pier Redevelopment Project, uh, the Marina Project, and others. Uh, so there has been a long-standing uh, working relationship between uh, the SDC, now the SCDC, and the city of Sheboygan. Uh, tonight's action by the Common Council to approve uh, funding uh, to support the activities of the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation will help continue that positive working relationship and support efforts at growing the economy, driving job creation and retention, expanding capital investment, and strengthening our organizational structure as a new countywide uh, economic development corporation. Uh, you do have a handout, I believe it was in the packets, 
uh, that, do, that describes the mission, vision, and some of the activities of the SCEDC, so I won't go through that in great detail. Uh, the SCEDC will implement a private-public partnership, and it's very important to emphasize that point. It's a public and private effort, a cooperative effort, uh, to lead efforts to improve the economic well-being and long-term prosperity of the businesses, residents, and communities throughout Sheboygan County. Uh, we are not an organization that supports just one entity or one community. We're a truly countywide effort supporting development, redevelopment, and job creation activities throughout every community in Sheboygan County. Some of our major efforts um, include but are not, are not limited to business assistance, involves going out and getting in front of uh, existing companies on a retention visit basis, trying to determine what their needs are and helping them expand and uh, create jobs and accommodate job growth here in Sheboygan County. Uh, business attraction and recruitment, we have launched a website uh, which is uh, really our portal to the world and we will uh, implement a targeted outbound attraction effort it's focused at real estate consultants, site selection consultants, and very specific targeted industry, industry sectors so that we are not um, uh, looking at a shotgun approach, we're looking at a targeted approach to those industry sectors that can uh, benefit, have the greatest amount of benefit here in the county to support existing employers. Additionally, we will promote financing tools, including revolving loan fund programs, new market tax credits, bond programs, and other programs uh, to existing businesses to help them identify opportunities to finance their expansion projects. And finally, we will support entrepreneurial business development activities, including supporting incubator projects, an angel investment network that we're trying to get underway, and other activities to support small business development in the county. In accordance with tonight's resolution, SCEDC representatives, myself or Gary or one of the other executive committee members, will provide quarterly updates to the City of Sheboygan's Finance Committee regarding our activities and accomplishments. And we will do that likely starting uh, in late August after our August board meeting. Uh, with that, I do uh, thank you uh, for your action tonight uh, to support the activities of the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation and forge a long and lasting partnership uh, between the City of Sheboygan and the SCEDC. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, consent agenda 7 1 through 7 17. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you. Under discussion. Alderman I, Bowers? It isn't working again, but anyway, thank you for recognizing me. Uh, I would like can, to. Can you do me a favor and push your button, please? Just let me check up here. I don't think any of them are working. I don't think, yeah. No. <laughs> I guess we'll have to do it like school. Bain Alderman Bain. Bowers. Yep. There we go. Please. Did, did yours work? Mine didn't, but anyway. Now you're working. All right. You're on. Uh, I have some questions on 7-5 uh, regarding the uh, parking uh, commission. Uh, if someone could uh, elaborate a little bit on this, uh, decreasing the membership, and also there's something in here about uh, city ordinance. Uh, if someone could enlighten me a little bit on this, I'd appreciate it. 7-5, uh, do we have anybody here from transit? Okay, I can, I can explain some bits and pieces of this. Um, this was something that came uh, originally from uh, a citizen, um, uh, Ed uh, Wachowski. Um, it was uh, turned down in the committee, and then it came back through. Um, it, uh, it was, uh, again, resubmitted uh, by the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance. And what this was basically what they wanted to do was to, um, was, was to change the makeup of the Transit Commission um, it, to basically uh, uh, have a different membership um, Take some members off that have been longtime members of the commission. I know the mayor was one of them at one point. Um, I believe they were decreasing the number of aldermen on there. 
Um, and uh, that was not uh, looked at, looked upon favorably by the commission. Also at the same time, uh, there was some question about approving the bills of transit. And it's been standard practice over many years as in any other department um, that the bills are paid and then a, a report is submitted to the commission. Uh, however, I believe we had an ordinance uh, in the past that uh, this conflicted with even though it's been past practice for many, many years. And so I believe that the uh, ordinance itself, um, I don't know, was the ordinance changed? I believe the ordinance was changed. No, the ordinance wasn't changed. However, it was just written into the practices. Steve McLean, do you have any? Uh, I remember drafting an ordinance to, uh, to change it. I, my recollection is that it passed, but I could be wrong on that. Attorney is correct. Right? We did. Okay. The mayor, yes. Um, and basically what it was is uh, uh, there was some uh, question or some accusations that maybe the bills weren't being paid properly in that, in that uh, uh, context. However, they are the same way that they are paid, paid in every other department in the city. Uh, transit goes through more audits than any other department in our city because they have a, a, a city audit by our finance department, they have a state audit, and they have a federal audit because they receive both state and federal, federal monies. And there's, they've never had a discrepancy on an audit. So that basically is what this is, is to uh, um, uh, file this. President Kisha. Thank you. If I may, to add to that, this was just a communication from the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance was not an actionable item by the committee. And as a matter of fact, I believe the same document is in the committee, the whole file, uh, as it was not uh, put to bed at the committee, the whole. So it was sitting in transit with nothing for them to do about it. It is in the hands of the committee, the whole. Answer your question. Okay, do we have anybody else would like to, Alderman Hanna? Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. My question is on item three. Uh, of RC number 10-11-713. Uh, uh, it deals with a, uh, a communication I received from Dr. Brower and Bernie Nowicki. Uh, this again is about the new condo development at the north end of Taylor. Um, trucks are using that as a turnaround now. They're asking there are no truck sign be put up. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is 7 dash what? Seven, uh, seven thirteen number three. Seven thirteen. So communication number nineteen ten eleven. Okay. I don't know whether it's been May referred to public protection and safety. Thank, Thank, you, Kittleson. Thank you. We did deal with this in public protection and safety, and I believe uh, our city engineer Ryan Sasma was going to be looking into that and he was going to be taking care of that and he was be contacting Bernie and Linda and letting talking speaking with them and let he would let them know what uh, was happening with that concur okay. okay answer your question very good are there any other questions on the consent agenda thank you um, I would ask that 7-16 uh, uh, be pulled for a separate vote 716 Okay, regarding uh, a contract with Miller Engineers and Scientists? Correct. Okay, 716 will be pulled for a separate vote, so we will do 7-1 through 715 and 717 on the initial vote. Roll call, please. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hanna? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Now 716 will be taken for a separate vote under, under discussion. It should be up. Yeah, they, they all stay up. Okay. 716, under discussion. <coughs> if there is none, roll call please on yeah, 716. Aye. Oh, Alderman Bowers. <laughs> uh, I guess, is there any particular reason why we have to pull this? Uh, otherwise, is there some reason that came up? For the clients of ours. Uh, the client of mine. Clients Alderman of Hammond requested that it be pulled for a separate vote. They're clients of my business. Oh, all right. I see. Okay. Any other discussion on 716? If there is none, roll call, please. Or 
No. Alderman Hammond, you good? Yeah. Roll call, please. Okay. Boak? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Abstain. Hannah? Abstain. Cott? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 11 ayes, 2 abstentions. <coughs> Motion carries. 718 through 721, communications and petitions to be referred. Reports of officers to 722 through 738 to be referred. Alderman Reckie. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would ask that we uh, take out 727 for a separate vote. Okay, 727 is uh, going to be referred at this point. It's being referred to committee of the, whole. the Committee of the Whole. We're not voting on it this evening. Who has the file? Okay. It's being referred. I was going to move the file. Can we move? Yeah. You can make a motion to file if you'd like. Oh. I'd like to move the file 727. Second. We have a motion in a second to file 7-27 under discussion. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just think that everybody here knows that Alderman Versi's wife is a member of Orange Cross. Um, if they don't, they do now. We haven't voted on anything that has dealt with Orange Cross specifically. Um, as far as him and Mr. Longmiller, it seems to me that he has apologized for whatever happened there. And uh, I just feel that this body has bigger, bigger issues to deal with than to uh, spend time on an investigation of another alderman. Thank you, Alderman Radke. Any further discussion? Alderman Pope. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I, I uh, just in the interest of transparency, I'm actually, I'm going to vote to not support the motion to file just because I think more transparency is always better uh, and it would take some extra time out of us, but I think we owe that to the constituency. So I'm gonna disagree with uh, my d distinguished colleagues, but I wanted them to know why. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bauck. Any further discussion? This is on filing the document. Alderman Hanna. I'm gonna concur with Alderman Bauck and I'd also uh, recommend if you have not read this month's uh, municipal magazine it's the yellow one you received I think it's excellent to read that to understand uh, the complicated this will give Alderman Versi a chance to explain and I think it's just transparency mm -hmm. is the right thing thank you Alderman Hanna any further discussion okay on the motion to file 7-27 uh, we will take a roll call vote a yes Vote will be to file. Correct. Bowers? Yes. Gisha? No. Hammond? No. Hannah? No. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? No. Radke? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. And Balk? No. Six eyes, seven no's. Motion fails. fails. So the most, the document is not filed. Moving onward, that was 7-22 through 738 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 7-39 by Alderman Boren, approving agreement for tree removal. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Under discussion, uh, Mayor, uh, this issue of uh, tree trimming came back to the Public Works Committee uh, again uh, last Tuesday. And I had some uh, requests after the last council meeting from several older persons that they wanted to see the bids that came through. Uh, and that's part of your document. And also as part of your document is a draft of the, uh, of the uh, contract between the city and Stevie B's landscaping for removal of, of the trees at no charge. Uh, during the discussion at the uh, Public Works Committee last week and in consultation with Director Bittner, uh, Stevie B's will only be contracted uh, to 
to remove the trees at no charge. And it says in the contract that the contractor has the rights to salvage all materials, meaning the wood. Uh, at this point, it's, it seems unlikely that Stevie B's will be giving any, given any stumps to grind, maybe an occasional one. But according to Director Bittner, uh, he felt that the bid of $120 per stump was somewhat excessive and we may want to rebid that. Director Bittner thought we maybe could get that a bid of maybe $60 or $70 per stump. However, uh, uh, if I remember what Director Bittner mentioned is that he believes that his public works personnel will be able to do most of the stump grinding in, in, uh, in the winter. Uh, but there is an urgency to get these trees trimmed. Uh, it's Mr. Bittner's, uh, Director Bittner's opinion that with almost 200 trees that need to be cut down that, and with the, the drastic cutbacks in personnel and DPW that his personnel are only going to be able to do the absolute emergency ones where they're going to be falling on somebody's house. There's other diseased trees, there's dead trees, <clears throat> and there's also some controversy about giving this contract to uh, Stevie B's landscaping over an incident that happened last summer. Uh, I guess it was a consensus of the committee, the committee members that were there, that we wanted to give Stevie B's uh, landscaping uh, another chance and the individual another chance. I go back to my days as chairperson of lawn licensing for three years, and had, had we not given individuals second chances on that committee, there would be a mass shortage of bartenders and taxi cab drivers <laughs> in the city. Uh, <clears throat> that does not excuse the, contact, the conduct of Stevie B from last summer. He paid his fine, and uh, I believe he's talked to Director Bittner and uh, Deputy Director Beeble <coughs> of the conduct that we expect from him. But this work has to get done. And if nothing else, if, we, if he can make a dent in the trees this year and, and, and let's say hypothetically get 100 of them cut down and take a look at it again next year, perhaps, and then the DPW personnel, if we don't have to make any further cuts, will be able to handle this. But the way DPW is staffed right now, this work is not going to get done. And it's, it's urgent to get done. So I, uh, I encourage your, uh, your approval of the resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Next, we have Alderman Hanna. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Um, I was under the impression this was going to come with a signed code of conduct from Stevie B's. Am I missing Alderman something? Boren, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Alderman Hanna, if you look closely at the contract, yeah. I think we have a built-in code of conduct saying that Stevie B's is really guaranteed nothing. If uh, Director Bittner gives him 10 trees next week. No, I meant a code week. of conduct with our citizens. A code of conduct with our citizens. I thought it was going to include language that there are standards at which he was to treat the public. And I, uh, I think he. That. I think he's been made aware of how we expect him to treat uh, the so public. I, okay. and, I, and, and the way the contract is written, he's not guaranteed anything. If he gets 10 trees and his conduct in the opinion of Director Bittner or Deputy Director Bittner, uh, Beeble, I'm sorry, if we uh, get any complaints from citizens, this contract ends. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Alderman Hanna. Thank you. I'm not going to support this only because it doesn't have a code of conduct. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. <clears throat> Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I I've read the contract, and uh, perhaps I've missed it, but Am I correct in assuming that if a homeowner wants to contract with another tree remover and the homeowner pay for it, they have the ability to do that? Or is that homeowner compelled to use DVB? I'm getting a nod from uh, Director Bittner that yes, they are able to, con to uh, contract with their own contractor. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call please. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? No. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. And Bowers? Aye. Nine eyes and four no's. Motion carries. 7 40 lies over. 741 through 747 to be referred.
Reports of Committee 6, 7-48 by the Committee of the Whole recommending filing documents submitting the Sheboygan Fire Department Ambulance Service Alternative Scenarios and Benchmarking Analysis prepared by the Finance Director Treasurer and accepting Scenario D to keep five fire stations and ambulance contingent on receipt of a letter from the union heads regarding concessions for long-term planning and that the long-term plan would be received by 12-31-10. Uh, Alderman Rindfleisch is not here. President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, the reason I'm supporting this is uh, while I didn't agree at the last meeting with the outcome of hiring the firefighters and, and the ambulance, staying in the ambulance business, uh, Alderman Hammond and I made two motions that night at the Committee of the Whole that I think should be carried forward out of this document, and mine was uh, to, uh, to have a letter from the Fire Department Union regarding concessions for long-term planning, uh, and I think that's going to be important going into next year's budget session that they're going to have to be part of the solution to pay this $240,000 next year because our budget situation right now with possibly a $1.6 million deficit, all of the departments are going to have to be a partner in this. And that's why I'm going to support, uh, support this document tonight. And also I think it's very important, the motion that Alderman Hammond made, that a long-range plan uh, be part of this by the end of the year so we know where we're gonna be going with the fire department. And I think your input from your field trip with the chief up to Minnesota and Northern Wisconsin can be part of that, part of that long range planning uh, for where we're gonna go with the fire department. But I also think again, that our, our union partners at the fire department have to be part of this solution as we go into next year and, and further years for whatever this long range plan for the fire department is going to, uh, whatever it's gonna transpire, thank you. Great, thank you Alderman Bourne. <coughs> Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I too fought uh, uh, against the hiring of the four additional firefighters, but given that we lost that vote uh, and we've got four new firefighters coming, I think the right thing to do is, is to stick with that plan given the concessions that the union has made and some of the things that uh, Alderman Bourne has talked about. So uh, not in favor of uh, hiring expensive uh, city employees with exceptional long-term health care and retirement benefits, not a fan of that, but since we got them, we might as well keep them busy and keep the folks on the south side nice and safe with Scenario D. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Next, we have Alderman Bowers. Thank you. So what you're saying is we're voting on this again. If nine people would vote no, where does it take us that we passed last week to hire for? Now, um, let's say we have nine uh, no votes. Where, where does this take us? Steve. Uh, you wouldn't have taken any action regarding the committee report. Uh, the committee report's still there. I guess you've got to do something with the committee report. This is, this is uh, accepting and adopting, accepting and filing the, the document itself. You've already lifted the hiring freeze to hire. Before. Okay, so nine vote no. We don't file it. What, where are we at? If you can talk uh, the majority of the people that are not filing it, I guess it hangs out in limbo forever. Oh, so we're just hanging... Yeah, it would just be no, the doc document the would be kind of floating in the air somewhere because oh. it would never be filed. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? Let me just. So, Alderman Bowers, this one and 750, the two from Committee of the Whole, those were documents that the Committee of the Whole acted on previously and it just didn't get on the last agenda. So, really, this is housekeeping. That's really what oh. it is. And if you don't take care of the housekeeping, then at the end of the year, it's just going to die in committee. I see. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. President Gisha. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate very much the words of uh, Alderman Bauck and Alderman Boren. Um, and uh, Alderman Boren had, and I had a conversation about this uh, earlier today where I think we're, we all understand the, uh, what's at stake. Uh, the, the only thing I, I kind of see seeping around the community a little bit that I had a concern of a few weeks ago is that we keep talking about our union partners in the fire department, our union partners will be a big part of this moving forward and that is 100% accurate. But you can add police department, DPW, city hall union, of which I believe there are two of them if my memory Correct. serves. You can add every single other one of them. And I think it's kind of seeped into the community that there's these special deals for, uh, for in this case, firemen. <clears throat> if we were talking about DPW, I assume that would be the same discussion. But it's kind of all the same. 
and I just like everybody to know that and, and keep in tr keep in <coughs> mind that um, I know the focus is on this at this time, but those same situations are throughout are systemic throughout and the same issues and the same concern or throughout all of our contracts. Thank you, President Kisha. Alderman Hanna. Well, in my attempt to submit more articles than Alderman Bourne does, <laughs> um, <laughs> I submitted two more articles this time that deal with, uh, this is nationwide. And, you know, the elephant in the living room is the cost of health care and retirement funds. And until we get our collective bargaining partners uh, at the bargaining table, got bargaining in good faith about the longevity of our city, that's when we really make the solutions. I mean, that's, that we can, we really shouldn't isolate any individual union. Uh, they're not, no individual union's the bad guy. The system, the way it's designed right now, is the bad guy. And we need to move in the direction of correcting that. Well spoken, Alderman Hanna. Alderman Bob. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, and I wanna uh, thank you, uh, thank President Gisha for uh, making that clear point that it is all of our union partners uh, because of several things we've spent a lot of time talking about. And if that is, and if that, and I want to thank in advance uh, Alderman uh, Hanna and President Gisha for their uh, resolution or what will hopefully become a resolution and ordinance uh, to, to change the way our union and non-union employees contribute to the Wisconsin Retirement Fund. I want to thank them in advance for that. And if that uh, is the best thing that comes out of that long conversation at that three-hour committee the whole meeting and our, our long and, and vigorous discussions here on the floor, that's a pretty great investment of our time those few nights because that's a great uh, uh, process-altering, shifting kind of thing that's going on here. And I agree with Alderman Hanna that it's going on around the country. And uh, Sheboygan is on the leading edge of it. We're getting ahead of it. I think other cities are struggling even more than we are with it. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bouk. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Cuff? No. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bulk? Aye. Bowers? No. And Gisha? Aye. Eleven eyes, two no's. Motion carries. 7-49 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 7311 based upon her failure to include all relevant convictions on her application and based upon her record of violations. Alderperson Vanderweel. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Is we have a motion and a second under discussion. Is Ms. Herman here? She's not, Your Honor. Please continue. Um, based on the fact that she did not list all of her um, violations, and after speaking with the police department, they felt that they also gave us indication that maybe it wouldn't be a good idea to give her her license. So we did Very not. good. Thank you, Alderperson Vanderweel. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Hannah? Uh, aye. Huff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hammond? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 7-50 by the Committee of the Whole, recommending filing various documents, RO number 94-10-11, submitting potential local transports market analysis and operational analysis based on the Finance Department's Alternative Scenarios and Benchmark Marking Analysis Report, dated May 3rd, 2010, and RC number 32-10-11, submitting incidental detail print Sheboygan Police Department and a summary of ambulance response times for the period 1110 through 33110, submitted by Alderman Versi. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and adopt the report of committee. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion. There is none. Roll call, please. Cuff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bulk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Reports of Committees 8, 7-51 by Finance, recommending authorizing a contribution to the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation 
for Business Development and passing the attached substitute resolution. President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second. The substitute resolution. Pardon me, in the substitute resolution. Thank you. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Your Honor, the reason it's a substitute resolution is what uh, Mr. Drynan referred to, and that is the quarterly report to the Finance Committee, <coughs> which will then move as a report to uh, this body. Very good. Thank you, President Gisha. Alderman Hanna? Yeah, just a, just a quick, quick question. First, um, be, before Alderman Hammond was on this council, um, he spent an awful lot of time um, in helping develop this whole concept, and I think he should be publicly recognized for a lot of legwork that he did. Um, second, um, I just want clarification from Attorney McLean. We'll have several elected officials on this committee. Will this committee uh, have to abide by open records regulations? <coughs> Will they have to post their meetings? Uh, number one, I don't represent the Sheboygan Development or the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation, so I, I prefer not to even address that question. I, but I do believe that the the Economic <coughs> Development Corp has looked into that issue and is satisfied that they don't have to comply with the open meeting law. Now, uh, whether they do or not, that's for them to decide. But that is a concern that the obviously the more governmental you make the body, uh, the more uh, likely you're going to uh, move into the realm of open meetings. So uh, it's going to be an incumbent upon that body to uh, maintain their, uh, their structure and so forth in a way to, if they wish, to avoid the open meeting law. Yeah, if, if I can, the more I read that it's a it's a slippery slope, so they need to it's, be careful. Uh, this uh, our the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation was was uh, patterned after the Fond du Lac model, uh, which is a tried and true model has been in uh, in in existence for many years. Um, there there has been certain court cases out there, uh, namely the infamous Beaver Dam case. Um, where uh, the, the, uh, their economic development corporation uh, crossed the line of being a, a, a public-private entity and uh, turned into a public entity. Um, this, uh, this is a well-thought-out, well-planned process. Good. The majority of the membership are corporate business partners. Yep. Um, the, the government uh, membership is minimal. Uh, myself, I am on the board of directors. Um, County However, board chairman. <laughs> County board chairman. Vanderson. County board chairman. Um, there, there are a couple of positions for the outlying communities. Okay. Other than that, it's, it's uh, mainly all private sector, which is the, the driving force behind the Good. Economic Development Corporation, if that answers your question. Thank you. It does. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Percy? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warren. Aye. I'm sorry, did I miss Vanderweel? Yes. Yes, I did. I'm going to say Jody. aye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Jody. Uh, Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Koth? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. <clears throat> 7-52 by finance, recommending authorizing entry into an intergovernmental cooperative agreement with the Sheboygan County, with Sheboygan County for joint purchase of a computer-aided dispatch records management system, also known as CAD RMS, with the attached updated agreement. President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted, and that's all that's necessary. The resolution. Be oh, pardon me. And the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Your Honor, uh, we may be coming to the road tonight, at least one way or the other, on the CAD RMS system. <laughs> We've heard it talked about in various ways, and I know I've been on a committee for two years, maybe three years <laughs> on it. Uh, it is a. It has been a, a long process, and we're working as a, a cooperative agreement with the with Sheboygan County, which is what we're approving here. Uh, the city will be contributing $250,000. The remaining funds are come from our partners in the county. 
and uh, the ongoing maintenance costs will come from the various user subscriptions of all the various government and non-government entities providing emergency services throughout Sheboygan County. It should be a wonderful upgrade to our city. I think the, the committee, not the committee I'm on, but the backroom folks who did all the work with the police department, the fire department, the sheriff's department, every, the jail keepers, because it is a jail module for the county, it is a, um, it is a legacy software system. In other words, we're talking about 30 to 20 to 30 years of use uh, of this software system with upgrades. So um, this is the end of the road, and uh, I certainly hope uh, we have support for this as, uh, as it's, uh, it'll, it'll be a, a wonderful upgrade for our officers and our emergency services through the county. Thank you, President Gish. If I may uh, I see you are 100% correct, and both our uh, fire chief and our police chief are definitely 100% behind this system. Uh, there's been a lot of work gone into this. You know, this has been something I, it must have been at least three years this has been underway, it seems like forever. Yeah, at least. At least. Um, but uh, no, it is a system that will tie everybody in the county together. On the, on, the, on the same system, it's also going to be paid for also not, not only by city and county, but the outlying communities that also will be using the system. So it's a, uh, it's a, a true countywide effort. Uh, I guess it's cooperation that, uh, that uh, actually works. So, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, and I think this, this uh, new system also, the next logical step is for uh, combined dispatch. Uh, I know that uh, uh, hopefully it's going to be on the, the next uh, Shared Services Committee meeting that uh, if we remember last year, we, uh, the county and the city authorized hiring a, uh, a manager of the dispatch that would be funded 50% by the city, 50% by the county, and be working over at the county with their dispatchers, our dispatchers, to get everybody on the same page so that when we do get to the, uh, the joint dispatch, that will be a seamless trans, uh, uh, transition. And again, with this new technology, when it's up and running, I just think the next logical step is to uh, hopefully, if, uh, if the, finan the financial situation for the city and county, uh, hopefully in the next year or two, we can move forward on this. But I think the first step is to hire that, uh, that manager to supervise and get everybody on the same page. Thank you. Right. Well, one, one thing is definite, uh, combined dispatch will never happen without this software. That's right. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Koth? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries 7 54 by salaries and grievances recommending lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire an employee benefits administrator in the human resources department. 1753, May 1st. Oh, I just missed a page here. Yeah. Okay, let's try 1753 mm -hmm. by finance recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2010 budget, establishing appropriation to Sheboygan County for city contribution for intergovernmental cooperative agreement with the Sheboygan County for joint purchase of a CAD RMS system, President Kisha. Thank you. We agreed to the agreement on the previous document. Now we have to pay for it. And this is the document that transfers the funds to do such. I move that the uh, uh, resolution be put, the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Thank you, President Kisha. And we have a second under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Radke? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wonkman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 754 by salaries and grievances recommending lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire an employee benefits administrator in the human resources department. Thank Vice you. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd ask that the resolution uh, be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Under discussion. Um, is Tom Rice here at all this evening? Tom? Yes. I, I guess I'd like Tom. We, we've gone over this before. Um, I just, I'd like Tom, if we could make a motion to have Tom come up and just verify things here. Can we have a motion to open the floor to Tom Rice? Second. I don't think we have to as a director. To. Oh, he is a director. He's a director. That's right. 
new employment status. Pseudo director. Pseudo director. <laughs> Pseudo director Rice. I guess I would draw your attention to the document package that you have, specifically the Human Resource Department Reorganization Strategic Goals, of which there are four. One, to provide more efficient delivery of services to employees, specifically in the area of benefits administration and problem solving. Two, to consolidate traditional human resource department functions and to relieve the finance department of work, which has really become more of a duplication of effort and numerous inefficiencies that we're currently experiencing. Thirdly, to assemble a competent core team which will be instrumental in the implementation of an HRIS system, which should include as an in-house payroll system tied to it. The initial review would be of the MUNIS system, but if that is not viable, then a turnkey HRIS system would be secured, which would be able to be downloaded to any system the city might decide to use going forward. And finally, to consolidate activities within the city into the Human Resource Department, which will ensure compliance with state and federal laws affecting employment and labor relations for the city. Uh, as this was discussed uh, several weeks ago, there was an issue raised about uh, one of the job descriptions and the qualifications. Those job descriptions have been modified. In your packet of information, you also have comparative salary data for comparable positions in several of the communities surrounding us and you'll notice that the salary grade we propose for that job is lower than most of those other jobs. Um, when I joined the city, there were four objectives that I, I set for myself and with the mayor. The first one was to negotiate labor contracts with all of our unions, uh, hopefully with the concessions that we're able to get. Secondly was to reorganize the Human Resources Department and put it in acceptable shape so that the next HR director, whoever that may be, uh, can walk in and start running rather than having to rebuild what was something that is archaic, old, and inefficient. And thirdly, to take and uh, renegotiate contracts in 2011 for 2012 and beyond. And finally, to take and find my replacement. This is a key part of those objectives. Uh, we had a person in the Human Resources Department who was allowed to retire who took with her 27 years of experience. Uh, it has been uh, unbelievably difficult trying to recover information that per that person carried with her, organize files, and do the kinds of things that are necessary just to serve the employees of the city. So just as firemen and policemen are critical to the safety needs of the community, these people are critical to meet the, the needs of our employees within the city. And I would ask and urge you to pass this resolution. Thank you, Director Rice. Uh, Alderman Bowers, did you have a question? Yes, thank you. Uh, all I have is 754. Uh, you say that there were outlines uh, given to us, what, last, last council meeting? That's correct. Okay, and as I recall, one was a high school diploma. We were talking about uh, sixty thousand dollars total in salary and benefits. Has that amount been lowered? The salary. The job description has been changed, requiring a bachelor's degree for that position, and that's what we are going to be recruiting for. Secondly, the salary was that was discussed was not salary, but salary and benefits combined of sixty thousand dollars. You'll notice if you take a look at the information in your packet. The salary ranges and things that we currently have go, and these are hourly rates, by the way, uh, an average of $29.93 per hour for Appleton. So round it to 30,000, that's approximately 60,000 in salary. If you add another 30% onto that, you're talking somewhere around 78,000 for that. Mr. Mayor, excuse me one sec. Tom, I, I don't have that packet. I don't see Maryland. So we may not have the numbers in front of us. We don't have, have okay. we don't have that. Oh, I, I yeah, we don't have, we have that. that. So if you could go more slowly with the numbers. I know, I, I like it that you're holding it up. I don't have it. Um, well, if we're talking, okay, first of all, we're talking about the wrong document. We're, we should be talking about 754. Right. It's lifting the hiring freeze only. Okay. What Tom and they're talking about is the next document that just 755. Okay, right. that helps. I apologize. Does that help a little bit. I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. 55, 55 is empty as well. Yeah, I don't have it. <clears throat> that all came with the last documents, right? Right. And, and Mayor, may I say this was all sent to us because I know that 
it was even after the meeting. These were attachments to a communication I believe all aldermen received, and they could have printed out all this information, the public sector survey report and the uh, job. Uh, they were all there. Got it. So thank you. They all, they all came in the last they council came, packet, or they all came via email? They all mm -hmm. came via email, att yeah. attached. Okay. Email? If, you, if you'd like me to go through them, I'd be happy to do that real quickly, if that would help Alderman Bob. If you go through alder, uh, hourly wage, please, total annual wage, and then total wage and benefit out of um, pocket. Those first, first, we are still discussing 754, which is just lifting the hiring freeze. We have to lift the hiring freeze before we can take action on hiring somebody. But respectfully, Mr. Mayor, we can't vote on that without the information that goes behind it, I would suggest. Right. I can't decide if I'm going to lift the hiring freeze unless I know what the numbers are. Your Honor, is it possible to hold 754 okay. for 755? Let's, let's make a motion to hold 754. So moved. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, 754 is on hold. We will now discuss 755, which is a report of Committee 9 by Salary and Grievances recommending amending Section 2975 of the 1975 Municipal Code so as to delete slash add various positions from the HR Table of Organization and Finance Department Table of Organization and passing the attached ordinance with the updated job descriptions for both positions and including a public sector survey report. Mm -hmm. President Gisha. Your Honor, I, I'm not trying to be difficult, but I don't have that information. If there was an email that came through, I didn't see it. It wasn't part of our council packet. I don't know if we can have discussion and deliberation. If it's not part of our council, if it's not part of the official documentation, we're discussing stuff in the public arena that is not available to the public. So, I would love to answer you, except I've been gone. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there were two new job descriptions that I have attached here. I don't have them in my, this is my full packet. I've got. Is it under other matters? No, no. I got nothing. I'm not clear on where who sent it. It was out. an email that was sent out because I've got them. You've got it. No. I don't have them with me, but I read them. If, if I could continue, Sue, maybe I can ask a more specific question. If it's not part of the council packet, and it's the information therefore is not available to the public for public discussion, yet we're doing it as a public discussion on information that is not that has not been made available to the public. I'm not trying to slow the process down or put a monkey wrench. It just seems a little right. concerned. Was it posted with the minutes on the website? That might, if it was posted, as it sounds like it was part of the minutes and it got emailed with the minutes to us and we, it wasn't pointed out that that was a separate document to me so all I did was look at the minutes. Right. But if it was posted with the minutes on the website, then the public has had time to read it and we can take uh, Director Rice at his word on the numbers. But it, if it wasn't posted, I kind of agree with Alderman Gisha that like I said, I wasn't here, okay. so I don't know. I know that the minutes were posted. The, the information that I'd like to share with you was a part of the public meeting for the Salaries and Grievance Committee and was presented there, and therefore it was part of a public uh, hearing, so to speak. President Kishan? If I can continue, I, I was not at that meeting. Um, no, I was not. Uh, I understand that, but that's okay for the five people in the committee. I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about the 50,000 people out in the community who, who, from a government transparency standpoint, I know there's some issues with timing and getting this in, in, uh, taken care of. I just have a problem with the public not being allowed to have their hands on these documents. I don't even have the documents, because I, I, I did not, as Alderman Bauck said, realize that it was part of the deal. I, I, you know, I, I believe in, you know, because uh, these are not attached and uh, so we don't uh, muddy the waters here, so to speak. I, I would look for a motion to hold. Motion to hold. Second. And we will hold both 754 and 755 then. Uh, Alderman Hi. Bauk. Mr. Mayor, if in order to accelerate the process, perhaps if Sue could put those two documents up on the public website and then maybe re-email it to all older persons so we have it and we'll, because of this we'll remember to look at it. Yes. So that could make it for two weeks from now. Or, or it can be in the next council packet as a yes, physical sir, either, attachment. Yes, sir. Either one. Yep. Okay. Very good. good all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Just, Both. Can I just make a mo just the, um, as far as the public goes, the public does not have access to all these documents on the website, never have. It'd be wonderful if we could do that at this point, but right now they would either call us, have us email it to them, come in and look at it. We have several public that come in and actually look at the documents, but this is not an automatic going on the website because we don't have the ability to do that yet, but we certainly can 
just resend it all to you so that you have it for the next acting on the next <coughs> could we just have it included with our council packet yes at least so it's a part of sure i I'm just uh, sure. concerned about having a public discussion about documents and a lot of numbers and facts and figures would I don't have documents in front of me. And I think the and confusion the is, is that matter. salary and grievance perhaps mailed it, emailed it, I'm thinking, to the members of the committee is what right. happened, I'm guessing. I don't know. Yeah, I know it was discussed in salary and grievances, mm -hmm. the sure. documents we're talking yeah. about. But. Mayor, may I just say, Sue, did you, you did have these with the, correct, with, yes. the, with the documents? Yes. Okay, I just wanted, yep. I, because that's... How but if, 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 you know, a lot of aldermen haven't seen them yes, yet, rather than muddying up the discussions, let's Thank just uh, hold Not those. trying to be difficult. For the next council meeting, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Held they are. <laughs> I'm going to turn off everybody's lights here, unless anybody has something they really want to say. Do you want to hold um, 754 for yes. next time also to be companion? 754 and 755. Second. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. All right, moving on. Ordinance introduced 10, 756 lies over. Matters laid over 11, 6-53, resolution number 40-10-11 by Alderpersons Gisha Bautboren and Radke authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2010 budget, establishing estimated revenue and appropriations for 2010 CDBG entitlement program. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Powers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Abstain. Anna? Aye. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Radke? Aye. 12 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. <laughs> 6-54, resolution number 41-10-11 by Alderpersons Gisha, Balk, Boren, Hammond, and Radke authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2010 budget establishing estimated revenue and appropriations for CDBG entitlement program. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Under discussion, Alderman Bowers. Yes. Uh, I remember voting on, is this for the coming year, is this for the year that we passed last year, or is this uh, set for the year 2011? Right now. 2010. For 2010. For 2010, yeah. for this so year. So what we voted on last year was 2009. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. And Vanderweel? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries 6 65. General Ordinance Number 7 10 11 by Alderperson Kath, repealing and recreating Section 2 726 and amending Section 2 727 of the Municipal Code relating to the composition of the Senior Activity Center Commission so as to delete one alderperson and the mayoral administrative officer as members. Alderperson Koth. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move, the ordinance, I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Versi? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 6-66, General Ordinance Number 8-10-11 by Alderpersons Kittleson, Gisha, Vanderweel, and Versi, amending Section 29-75 of the 1975 Municipal Code so as to change the job description for the position of finance director slash treasurer in the finance department for the city of Sheboygan. Vice President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I'd ask that this um, ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. If I may say, this is just an upgrade of the job position uh, that was approved through S&G. So we had made sure it was upgraded before we, re we reposted for the position. Any discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. 
Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kuth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? Aye. And Wongaman? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries 6 68 General Ordinance Number 9 10 11 by Alder Persons Rinfleisch, Bowers, Koth, and Wagaman, repealing and recreating Section 70 6 of the Municipal Code so as to adopt and clarify the statewide smoking ban. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would ask that this be referred back to law and licensing. Second. Um, I Thank you. I think there are matters that need to be clarified in the language. And I think uh, Attorney McLean agrees. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion to refer back to law and licensing and a second under discussion on referring back. Alderman Boren. Uh, thank you, Mayor Ryan. I have a question that I'd, that I'd like, uh, maybe Attorney McLean can address it or the committee. Are the fines that are proposing under C on the last page where it says penalties, uh, do we have discretion on setting the penalties, Attorney McLean, or does this follow what the state is recommending for penalties? Um, well, when I reviewed what was drafted here and what was submitted, that's one of the reasons uh, I recommended it go back to law and licensing, Alderman Bourne. Uh, the penalties in subsection C of the ordinance are what we currently have in our code. Uh, but the way this is drafted, uh, subsection 70-6A1 that incorporates the entire section 101.123 of the statute, that's that new smoking ban, that also has a penalty section in it that conflicts with what we have in, okay. in, uh, in our current code and what's in this proposed draft in C. So that needs to be reconciled along with some other things. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Any further discussion? And the motion to refer back, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law. Uh, seven, oh, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 7-57 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Oriana Paul, president of the Sheboygan Liberty Coalition, making the council aware that they will be holding a one-year anniversary Freedom Rally Tea Party event at Fountain Park in Sheboygan on Saturday, September 4th. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 758 is communication from Heather Adamson, director of the Full Moon Race, requesting permission to hold their third annual event on August 21, with the race starting in Plymouth and follows the Old Plank Trail for the majority of the race and ends at Sheboygan's Memorial Mall. We'll also go to PPNS. 759 is a resolution authorizing signing easements for a mini storm sewer to be constructed in portions of their property. This will be referred to Public Works. 760 is a communication from Aspire Architecture and Design LLC on behalf of their client, James Kukovich Jr., requesting an encroachment to replace an existing fence, fence located at Susha Superbar, 1054 Pennsylvania Avenue. To city planning. 761 is the ordinance granting James J. Bukovic. It's Bukovic. It is heirs and assigns the privilege encroaching upon described portions of Pennsylvania Avenue for the purpose of construction and maintaining the fence. And Mr. Bukovic will also go to city planning. 762 is an RO by the city clerk submitting the annual proposals for action presented to the city council June 2010 by the Sheboygan County Taxpayer Alliance. We'll go to finance and the committee of the whole. 763 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2011. To law and licensing. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you. Aye, aye, aye.